What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. Last time, we covered a brand new character as part of the series. We talked about Dakuma, Universe 11's version of Jiren, or at least someone from the same species that's very similar to Jiren. Despite some similarities, we did see a lot of differences between the two, mainly in their mindset and their occupation. But with the Tournament of Power coming up, we could actually see the two interact in this finale of the series. For this part, let's add a like over 3,000 likes, because I may want to continue this scenario. I'm not too sure, but you'll see why later in the video. I just want to gauge if there's enough interest for that for another part. Anyways, let's pick up from here and finish this story. One thing that I didn't really talk about in the last part was that Universe 11 now needs a new member for their team. And to be honest, Universe 11 isn't really a big focus here. I mean, most of Universe 11 was unimportant anyways. Really, it was only Topo and Dispo. And obviously Jiren, but we can't cover him. So we need to replace Jiren with someone. And I think it's best that we just throw in a joke character. Because this is the kind of question that doesn't really need a serious answer. So I'd like to introduce all of you to Topo's sister, Topet. Yes, I know. Female Topo. I just needed a 10th person for the team and decided, well, I might as well make something stupid and... I, I, I kind of like this idea, in all honesty. I mean, come on. I don't, I don't think I'm going to do any better than this, so... We're, we're, keep, we're keeping Topet here. No, she's not a God of Destruction candidate either. Anyways, that's out of the way now, so we can actually talk about the important stuff. That's kind of the last plot hole we needed to fill before going into the actual tournament, because now we have all the teams that we need. Universe 6 has theirs, Universe 7 has theirs, and Universe 11 now has a brand new member to replace Jiren. It's all coming together. Like normal, there's still some time before the tournament, giving all the contestants time to meet each other. This is the first time that Jiren sees Dakuma. The two are both unsure about each other. They've each heard a bit about the other, but they don't really know too much about each other. Their conversation is kind of an awkward one at first, but the two know they're the strongest from each of their respective universes. Without anything else really to ask, Jiren just asks how their planet's doing. Dakuma says his planet is thriving. He's their strongest warrior, and because of him and others like him, that planet is safe and sound. He asks Jiren the same, and Jiren says that his planet is pretty much wiped out, but he avenged his people. Now this catches Dakuma's ear. He'll definitely want to hear more about this. Everyone was wiped out and Jiren avenged them somehow? And even more, judging by Jiren's face, that doesn't seem like the full story. It looks like they'll have to discuss it further during the tournament, because it starts right after. From the beginning, it's pretty clear that Universe 7 and Universe 6 have an advantage. Sure, some of the other universes have strong warriors. But I mean, take a look at Universe 6 for example. Hit and Dakuma? They're insane. Both are very active right from the start, and with their great power, they're able to get some eliminations right away. Universe 7's no different. Gohan and Piccolo make a great duo, especially when Gohan's using Super Saiyan 3. Goku and Vegeta are kinda off on their own, but occasionally they're working together, although it's not really needed because even in their base they're really strong. As for Jiren, he's also kinda solo, but all the other fighters of Universe 7 group up together. They each know their strengths and weaknesses and know how to pace themselves. So these two universes actually have a great start. One of the first big fights is between Kaba and Gohan. Kind of a weird matchup, but a fitting battle between two Saiyans. Kaba still only got Super Saiyan. And while Vegeta may have used this as an opportunity to train Kaba, Gohan's not really like that. But the two are still aiming to have a good fight, with Vegeta watching actually interested in the result. Kaba comes to learn that there's more than just Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan 2. And not just those god forms either. There's something called Super Saiyan 3 which Gohan has, and it's incredibly powerful. But Gohan tells him it takes a while to control. Gohan was able to tap into it a while ago, but it took a lot of time and effort to actually gain more control over it. Either way, Kaba's glad to learn this. The two have a great fight, although it's clear that Gohan's gonna win this one. As for the human fighters, they band together like I mentioned before, being able to eliminate some of the lower tier fighters. For Goku and Vegeta, things are a bit similar to how it went in camp. They're just so beyond everyone else that even in their base form, they don't really have a tough time fighting them. Although they do know that some of the universes do have strong people that they'll face soon enough. Jiren's kind of the same way, but he's looking forward to his fight with Dakuma. And inevitably, that time comes. Goku kind of wanted to face him too, but he sees why Jiren wants to. The two made their connection before the tournament, and he knows the two are specifically looking to fight each other. Right away, the two begin with a brief sparring match. This serves as a warm-up and a way for them to discuss. Right away, the gods are watching on amazed. Beerus and Shampa want them to stop warming up, but everyone else is still impressed. Even without using all their power, they're strong. Surprisingly strong. And this leads to the two of them talking. Dakuma heard that Jiren was part of some galactic patrol or whatever, something that Hit mentioned, and Jiren confirms this. It's kind of like a space cop. He goes around ensuring that there's order in the universe. Or at least, his sector of the universe. But still, he aims to preserve peace by trying to arrest all the criminals around in space. So, he imprisons criminals, villains like Frost. But Jiren mentioned before that he avenged his people. How would he do that then? Jiren explains everything about Frieza, 
Frieza came and slaughtered everyone on his planet, and later on he arrested Frieza. Until he later escaped, and Jiren was forced to kill him that time. This is where Dakuma begins to see what Hit was telling him. He feels that Jiren is soft and this only proves it. He ended up killing that Frieza guy anyways, so why not kill him in the first place? Jiren explains, he only does that as a last resort. Otherwise, he's no better than the criminals that he's trying to stop, especially people like Frieza. But Dakuma says that's kind of a pointless mindset. I mean, he ended up killing him in the end anyways, so that kind of negates that whole point. It just sounds like Jiren's acting all high and mighty for nothing. Jiren's actually taken aback to hear this. He was looking forward towards a fight, but it seems like Dakuma's trying to give him some sort of lesson. One that wasn't really welcome in the first place. He asks why Dakuma's being so critical and why is this even his business in the first place, and Dakuma explains. He's not too dissimilar from Hit, except he's not as morally ambiguous. He feels his moral compass is pretty clear. He's a mercenary, but he only kills the people that he deems bad. He tells Jiren that he just likes to take matters into his own hands, for his own gain as well. The gods don't help them, and no one else helps, so put two and two together. He would be the best one to do it. Not to mention, he makes a profit while he's at it. Jiren says that makes him no better than a criminal, but Dakuma objects. He says he only kills the scum of the universe. Again, the gods don't care for them. So what's wrong with him taking matters into his own hands? Especially since he doesn't perceive that he's doing any bad. I mean, it's not like he takes random hits on random people. He goes after criminals and doesn't do it randomly. He's assigned to go after these people. It's part of his job. And he tells Jiren it's worked out for him so far. It lets him personally grow stronger, and it helps keep a lot of crime out of the universe. Sure, he can't stop everyone, but he thinks he's at least helping. And he reminds Jiren once more, look up in the stands. All those gods of destruction, they're not down here fighting for the sake of their universe. Sure, they know the whole point was for mortals to fight, but he tells Jiren to think of it on the larger scale of things. These gods do nothing for their universes, they sit back, acting neutral, and pretty much being incompetent for millions of years. He knows that's how Shampa and Fuwa are. He's sure that Beerus and Shin are the same, not to mention Vados and Whis, and for that matter, every other angel, god of destruction, and supreme kai from the other universes too. Think about it, the gods are allowed to destroy stuff but they don't actually do their job. So what's wrong with mortals taking that into their own hands? Especially someone like him, someone that needs to do this. This actually does begin to resonate with Jiren. Dakuma was able to pinpoint the exact thing that Jiren hated, the gods. Now it's no secret that Jiren kinda has it out for Beerus at this point, and Dakuma kinda picked up on that, but wasn't too sure. This only further confirms it, and he questions further. Jiren doesn't like the gods of destruction, does he? And Jiren confirms this. Dakuma knows that he's been training with Beerus because Jiren said so. And Dakuma's starting to see some similarities between him and Jiren. He flat out tells Jiren what he wants to wish for. If he wins and gets the Super Dragon Balls, he's gonna wish to become the God of Destruction. Not only for power, but because he wants to be the one to take the job. He wants to take matters into his own hands. Doesn't Jiren want to do the same? Well, assuming the universe survives, that is. Their fight continues on, and they keep discussing. Meanwhile, Goku and Vegeta stick together more and more, eliminating some other universes once they're facing stronger people. Vegeta ends up facing Hit in a rematch, and this time, he's come prepared. He knows Hit's techniques and he's gotten a lot stronger. And yeah, Hit was able to come up with some new techniques, but Vegeta's pretty confident here. Goku lets him take on this one alone, and Hit's actually surprised. He knew Vegeta was strong before, but he defeated him so easily. This is a completely different person. In the end, Vegeta comes out victorious, actually being able to defeat Hit in this rematch, and that means Universe 6 lost one of their strongest fighters. But not that it matters because some other people are trying to take on Universe 7. Goku's fighting the Universe 6 Saiyans, training them for a bit and ultimately defeating them, with Gohan and Piccolo defeating the Namekians as well, meaning Universe 6 just lost more fighters. But even though Universe 6 has lost some fighters, there's still other people that want to fight Goku and Vegeta. Specifically, Topo and his sister. <laughs> I, I can't take that seriously, I'm sorry. I, I, was trying to, I was trying to not say that while laughing, but I mean, whatever, I'm keeping that in there. Goku and Vegeta begin their fight with Topo and Topet. <laughs> Topo is not actually going to use his God of Destruction power here because he's not pressured into it. And Topet doesn't use hers because she doesn't have one. But during their fight, Vegeta questions something. Why did their parents name them Topo and Topet? Topo tells him not to question it. And this just gets him angry. No one insults his sister. <laughs> but Goku and Vegeta get away with it because once they go Super Saiyan Blue, they're able to defeat the two. Topo is pretty strong, but with the two of them together, they defeat him. Topet's ready to show off her true power, but she's defeated too. Oh well, better luck next time. Let's go back to Jiren's fight. Jiren and Dakuma continue their fight and their discussion, but the fight's getting more and more intense. Now, they're actually powering up further and further as the fight gets serious. Especially now with Hit defeated, and some other fighters in his universe losing, Dakuma knows that he's their last hope. He's gotta start taking this seriously. He's influenced Jiren enough. And in the end, does it even matter if he influences Jiren? I mean, if he wins anyways, they're just getting erased. It's a shame too. 
Despite Jiren being kinda soft, Dakuma feels they could've gotten along, not to mention he's pretty strong. Jiren would've been a great sparring partner, but his own survival is more important than theirs. Once again, he's just doing what he needs to do to survive and be safe. It's nothing personal against them. For the first time, Dakuma begins showing his true power, which isn't too dissimilar from Jiren's. No crazy transformation or colored hair or anything, he just bulks up considerably, gaining an intense blue aura, clashing with the red flames around Jiren. And surprisingly, even with how strong Jiren is, Dakuma is beginning to overcome him. But Jiren is joined by some help, his friends and training partners, Goku and Vegeta. They're sticking with him until the end, while the rest of Universe 7 fends off the other fighters. But even with this help, Dakuma's power seems to be too much. He lands a powerful hit on Goku, knocking him away. These two are actually serving as good distractions, so he's aiming to take them out first. He then kicks Jiren away, focusing on Vegeta only. With one hand, he grabs onto Vegeta, flinging him into a nearby pile of rock, then launching a massive blast that takes out a chunk of the arena, alongside Vegeta. Vegeta's knocked out, but Jiren and Goku come in to attack once more. And now with one less person to focus on, he goes for Goku next. He kicks Goku into the air, then jumping up to follow him. Jiren jumps up to try and help, but Dakuma launches a blast downwards that keeps Jiren on the ground. Mid-air, his fist meets with Goku, with Goku punching Dakuma in response. Goku's knocked up even higher, and in both his hands, Dakuma charges energy. He flings two massive key blasts at Goku, with the two blasts colliding mid-air as they hit Goku head-on, knocking him out of the ring next. And now, Dakuma's only focused on Jiren. Jiren puts up a good fight and shows off a lot of his power. Dakuma is impressed, but Jiren can't overcome him. He tells Jiren that he had a good show, and tells Jiren to remember what he said. This is the end of the line, though, as he finishes the battle and knocks Jiren out of the ring. There's still some other people that haven't been eliminated, and Dakuma takes it upon himself to do so. Not that it's that tough either. Within a few more seconds, he's able to clean out the ring, defeating everyone, claiming victory. This means all the other universes are erased, except for Universe 6. And now he gets a wish from Super Shenron. What'll he actually wish for? Is he really gonna wish to take Shampa's spot? Well, no. That was only a bluff against Jiren. He does want to take Shampa's spot, but this seems too easy. He'd rather do it in his own way. Not to mention, he has a much better wish in mind, one that'll be much more fulfilling for him down the road, reviving all the other universes. It's not fair that they had to die just for them to survive. And again, think of Dakuma's mindset. He despises the gods, meaning he'd most likely want to go against Zeno's decision to erase everyone. Little did he know though, this is what Zeno actually intended. And he's happy with this outcome. Dakuma hopes this means he gets to see Jiren again. Jiren left quite the impression, but Dakuma also left an impression on Jiren himself. And let's talk about that for a bit. After the tournament, things cool down, and Jiren decides he wants to make a move. Dakuma's words stick with him, and he still wants to surpass Beerus. Maybe now is the time. His power is more than enough, and he's learned some things from Beerus that he can use against him. And there's only one way to take the throne, killing Beerus. He tells Beerus he wants to spar one day, and Beerus is okay with this. It's been a while since he fought, and maybe this will actually be fun, as well as good training for Jiren. But Beerus can tell something's up. It's kind of weird that Jiren just asked for this out of the blue, and he can detect Jiren's uneasiness. He wonders what this guy is scheming. Anyways, the fight begins. Jiren lunges at Beerus, and Beerus is pretty impressed with his power. He hasn't really seen Jiren fight all out too much, mainly not seeing this firsthand. This is the first time he gets to experience it head on, because Jiren's actually serious this time. He wants to know what's gotten into his student, and Jiren says what's been on his mind. He's been questioning Beerus' integrity and his effectiveness. He just sits around doing nothing. And furthermore, he's lied to all of them. Beerus says that he must remain neutral. He can't just go around solving everyone's problems. That's the mortals' problems. Jiren says it doesn't matter though. He does a terrible job of being neutral. All he does is sleep for years on end. And he knows that Beerus ordered Vegeta's destruction. He was working with the guy who killed everyone on Jiren's planet too. Beerus is actually surprised to hear this. How does Jiren know about his connection to Frieza? It becomes clear that the spar is turning into an all-out battle. Jiren vows to defeat Beerus here and take his spot. The two Saiyans are watching on as well, amazed but concerned. Is all this actually true? Beerus order the destruction of their planet? Not that Goku cares much, and not that Vegeta really cares too much about Vegeta at this point, but this does come as a shock to them, and they wonder, what else has Beerus done that they don't know about? Whis watches on saying nothing, and he actually wonders how this fight will go. Goku and Vegeta don't know if they should intervene or not, either to help Jiren or stop the fight. They're just kind of confused and bewildered, during the fight, Beerus begins to realize that he created this. He encouraged Jiren to go this route and become a god of destruction. Think about it, it's only natural that Jiren would want to destroy Beerus, taking the throne by force. And Beerus actually accepts this. He's actually enjoying himself and realizes that this is necessary. If Jiren wins here, he'll have earned a spot as a god of destruction. But if Beerus wins, he'll kill Jiren. Jiren wastes no time though. 
He's aiming to kill Beerus after all, so right away, he breaks out one of Beerus' techniques, something that he learned a while back, the Hakai. Of course, Beerus is no stranger to this, so he tries his own. With the two Hakais clashing, everything shakes, the entire planet, everything around it. It seems like the whole universe shakes from this, but really, the two Hakais just cancel each other out. I mean, you're basically destroying destruction. And this actually gets Beerus to realize something. The two of them are evenly matched. I mean, Jiren has the perfect use of the Hakai, and his raw power seems to be equal to Beerus. He doesn't think this fight will be decisive either way, but it gets him thinking. He tells Jiren that he's proven himself. But Jiren still wants to fight. He wants to win this and become the God of Destruction. And Beerus tells him he'll become God of Destruction one day, but not today. For now, he'll officially be made as a candidate. Jiren's made his voice heard, and Beerus will try to do better at his job. But also, he'll give Jiren the ability to help as a candidate. And who knows, maybe down the road, they could fight once more, and Jiren can take the throne by force. Jiren actually snaps out of it after hearing this. Beerus actually listened to him. Not only did he become a candidate for God of Destruction, but Beerus at least said that he wants to try to do better at his job. Obviously, Jiren still doesn't trust his integrity, but he'll give Beerus the benefit of the doubt. Besides, he could always keep training, and if Beerus doesn't keep his word this time, Jiren will finish the job that he started here. Having enjoyed the fight, Beerus is actually pretty content despite almost being killed, making peace with the student once more. He sticks a hand out, and Jiren shakes it. It's weird how happy he is after an attempted assassination. So, what's next after this? Even though this is the finale, I might make an epilogue to the series if there's enough interest. That's why I put the like at the beginning of the video. Going beyond the tournament power, we can show some more changes on Earth, as well as Dakuma returning, and what truly happens between Beerus and Jiren, as well as any other plot points that I haven't really covered here. I did have a few more ideas for this scenario, but I didn't know if there would be enough interest, so I left them out of this part and I might include them in another one. Drop a like and let me know below if you'd like to see more of this scenario. But besides that, this is pretty much where it ends for now. So what did you guys think about this scenario? And if anything continues, what do you think will happen next? As always, if you like the video, be sure to drop a like, and let's try to hit that like goal from the beginning of the video so we can get another part of this series. If you haven't already, why not subscribe? As well as hitting the bell icon to get notified about any future parts of this what if, or any other videos that I upload on my channel. Anyways, thank you all for watching, thanks for supporting the scenario, and I'll see you all in my next video.